we've inspected the strain gauge, we looked at it a little bit closer, and now it's a good time for us to start cleaning things up. This is one of the most common areas where customers will miss a very important step uh, to finishing up their strain gauge installation. And that is whenever you solder on to strain gauges, you're creating a solder connection, but you're using flux to help wet the solder. And flux is your friend while you're soldering, but it's your enemy as soon as you're done because it can become more and more conductive with time. It's also very mildly acidic. And if you put that over top of an exposed electrical connection, which could be a grid or tab on the strain gauge, over time it can cause uh, some etching and can cause uh, drift in the strain gauge readings. So my point to that is it's very important for us to clean it up. And what we're gonna use to clean it up is this little bottle that's called rosin solvent. Rosin solvent's a 50-50 mixture of isopropyl alcohol and toluene. And basically we're gonna use that to dissolve the flux and then we're gonna remove it from the gauge site so it's not gonna be a concern. So if you're ever soldering the strain gauges and you're wondering whether or not you need to use rosin solvent, the answer is yes. Even if the flux that you're using says it's no clean, for strain gauge measurements, you need to clean that stuff off because we're dealing with parts in a million of resistance change and you can see the presence of flux in particular over the course of a longer period of time. So to do that, I'll take this bottle and I'll just grab my uh, tweezers and I need to remove the uh, shipping seal off of it. This little white plastic seal. And then the next thing is to take the rosin solvent. It comes in a little brush cap bottle. This happens to be one that we use for workshops. It's a little bit smaller. I think the standard size bottle is one ounce. This is like a half an ounce. But I'm gonna take it and apply it right over top of the strain gauge lead wires and also use it around the edge of the piece of paper drafting tape because now is the time we wanna get this drafting tape off. So I'll just take it and kind of flood it and basically use it to lift the piece of tape off. I'll just lay that to the side. And now's a good time to inspect your work. Uh, you can get some flux built up kind of in between the conductor, so I'm trying to clean that off. And the idea here is that you want to get it wet with the rosin solvent. And then we're gonna take one of these gauze pads and we'll just blot it dry because with the rosin solvent, you get it wet and you start dissolving the flux and then you wanna remove that flux. So you take it and you blot it dry and then we'll do the same thing again. So again, take the rosin solvent, flood it over top of the area. The strain gauge in this case has already been uh, had the leads, the flex circuit put on it. So we don't have to really worry about cleaning it, although as, it, as the flux kind of runs around the side of the beam, I'll go ahead and try to wash it good. Put the cap back on it, and again, at least two to three good washings with the rosin solvent. Now, once you get it, once you get it cleaned, you know, we're gonna be holding this bat down here at the bottom. So one of the things we've got to do is figure out a way that we're gonna transition from the bat over to our data acquisition. So we're gonna add a small strain relief uh, in the cable. And for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tape it down onto place on the handle of the bat. If you wanted a more permanent solution, you could use things like um, some of those nylon tie wraps where you wrap it around and pull it tight. I think those work great for holding down your lead wires. Uh, some of our protective coatings also work really well for holding down leads. Uh, we've got a couple of Dow Corning products that are RTVs that work pretty good for that. In particular, uh, 3145 RTV works really good for holding down the wires. Uh, what I'm gonna do at this point is take a piece of paper drafting tape and I'm just gonna wrap it around the bat right here I'm gonna have a little bit of a strain relief bump in the, in the wire. I just want it resting on the surface, but raised just ever so slightly. And I'm gonna tape it right here. And then I'm gonna come back and put on our environmental coating. And in this case, we're gonna use 
a uh, single part, one component uh, material. It's called uh, M-Code A. It's a polyurethane protective coating that'll provide a thin, hard layer over top of the strain gauges. For the really the life of this bat, it's going to be inside. Occasionally, we're going to take it outside. If this were something we were going to leave outside for extended periods of time, we probably want to get a, a more robust protective coating. But this works great for a laboratory uh, type project. So <clears throat> I'm going to lay the bat down, take another piece of the uh, paper drafting tape, and I'm gonna wrap it around it. And what I'm trying to do is hold this in place. I was looking for it, it was right next to me, but I missed it. But I'm gonna take the wire, hold it in place. I got a little bit of a strain relief loop in it. I'm gonna wrap this paper drafting tape around kind of snug. And since we're gonna be swinging it, I'm gonna do it again, so I'll... Just take another piece of paper drafting tape. And just try to pull it tight. And again, all I'm trying to do is to hold the wire down onto the baseball bat so that as we start to swing with it, we don't pull it off. And then really the last thing I'm going to do is use the M-Code A. The M-Code A again is a polyurethane protective coating. I'm going to take my tweezers and just remove the shipping seal off of it. And really what I'm going to coat is the area around the strain gauge, the flex circuit, and the lead wires as well. So. And just so that it looks a little bit nicer, I'm going to take a couple of pieces of paper drafting tape and just sort of mask it off. Just to make it look a little bit nicer. Not real critical. We got plenty of room here on this bat, but. And then I'll just coat the area in between the two pieces of tape. I'll just take it and kind of flood it. And it's going to run, so, you know, to build up much thickness, you're probably going to have to give it maybe about 20 minutes or so to, to kind of start to thicken. Then you could go back and brush some more on it if you want to. In my case, I'm going to brush some over top of the wires. Some of it's going to run off. I'm not too concerned about it. I'll roll it around. Just try to get it on a nice thin coat. Let's kind of brush it over the wires again. All right, so now we're gonna let it sit. So one of the nice things about M-Code A is if you give it about 20 minutes, it starts to become tack free. So really you could start testing this, I would say inside of about 30 minutes. So we're gonna let it sit here, uh, let the M-Code A start to harden up. Uh, then basically we're gonna be ready to start uh, testing this bat. And there's really two things we're gonna look for. We're gonna we're gonna check it electrically, make sure it seems like it's performing like it should. And then we're gonna connect it into a data acquisition system and uh, see if we can take a few swings with it and get a response uh, out of the strain gauge. So that's the basics of taking a baseball bat and converting it into a transducer. Now what we need to do is to go test it. So we're gonna let the M-Code A cure for a few minutes and then go give it a swing.